This study is uh, in patients with metastatic breast cancer. Um, it's based on real-world data um, from the Anchor network of Roche and the Flatiron database. And the goal of this study is to evaluate surrogate endpoints in patients with metastatic breast cancer. We rated two surrogate endpoints, the first one being real-world progression-free survival, the second one being time to next line of therapy, and uh, we looked at these endpoints in relation to the gold standard, which is overall survival. And so uh, we evaluated the correlation using dedicated copula models um, that are adapted for survival endpoints. Um, we had a cohort of around 10,000 patients with metastatic breast cancer, and um, for the current abstract, we looked at the overall population, but also at the stratification based on prognostic subgroups of metastatic disease. Um, so patients were classified in a subgroup based on the location of their metastatic disease. So whether they had brain mats, whether they had liver mats, other visceral mats, and maybe only bone mats. And that would be the main stratification into four subgroups that are of prognostic significance um, based on previous studies. And so what we saw overall was in the overall population, uh, meaningful correlation for rework PFS with overall survival, but also TTNT or time to next line of therapy with overall survival. When certified across subgroups, we also saw the same correlation being maintained across all subgroups for both circuit endpoints. So what's the main goal of the study? Is to establish these endpoints are being good circuits for overall survival, and eventually, in the design of clinical trials, so this is based so far on the retrospective data, but eventually if these endpoints are fully validated, this would help achieve a design of clinical trial that would require a shorter follow-up and also lower sample size, meaning potentially more rapid advances in the field of breast cancer therapy. Overall survival, if, if used as an endpoint in clinical trials, um, for especially for a patient with breast cancer, um, prevents with a need for a very large sample size, that's one, and also a very long follow-up. Because usually patients are able to benefit from therapies that prolong th their survival by many years sometimes. So this means that the trial would require a very large um, uh, 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 period to, to be followed and also a very large sample size in order to achieve the statistical um, thresholds that are required. So when using other surrogate endpoints, if these are actually validated instead of overall survival, which is usually considered as the gold standard, um, if these end surrogate endpoints are validated, we can use them instead of overall survival. So meaning trials could go even faster and we could evaluate novel therapies uh, using endpoints that are more easily acquired and more easily achieved. And this would help more rapidly advance the field. Yes, so actually um, the, uh, the, the overall approach that we're working on and which has not been fully described in this abstract is the two-stage meta-analytical approach for the validation of surrogate endpoints. What we show here in this abstract is only related to the first condition. And now there is also additional work being conducted to validate the second condition, which is more related to the patient level data. And in this case, if the two conditions are validated, so there is a correlation of surrogate endpoints, but also there is correlation across different clinical conditions and in relation to different clinical contexts and more looking at the patient level data, and the second condition is also validated, this would technically mean um, an overall validation of the, of the surrogate endpoint. And um, this is one of the standards that are established for um, the thorough evaluation of surrogate endpoints.